Hello, this is Rumor, and I am so happy if you're joining me today. I just wanted to pop in and do first a quick look at some of the decks that I switched to on my tarot table over the course of June and now carrying into July. Basically, as of the summer solstice, I was just really feeling that bright, light, vibrant energy and wanting to pull in some decks that would just be fun, fun, fun. Um, I've had a rather heavy spring and I am just trying to raise my own spirits. And so I ended up swapping out the previous decks that I had at my table that were more of the Fae and Forest, which were utterly enchanting, uh, so very much appealed to my sense of magic and wonder. And so it's not that they were super, super heavy, but um, well, I think you'll know what I mean as far as what these decks are literally bringing to the table when I say that I've got the Tarot of Curious Creatures, the Animal Spirit Oracle, Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot, and New Acquisition Wisdom of the Depths Tarot, which I feel silly for sharing now after I just shared a video on my Oceanic decks. This was not a part of that because this was acquired after I had filmed that video. And I did think about after the fact filming something and throwing it into that video, but it is a very new deck to me as well. And I guess I just wanted to give it a test run and see if it's something that would be staying in my collection or not. And after a few readings, I can pretty much guarantee you this is going nowhere. I love it so much. I love it so much. Yeah. So I showed some of these decks in my recent videos as I was sharing my animal and oceanic decks. So I won't spend a ton of time going through them now, but just to do a little flip through so you can just see the aesthetics that I'm working with. Okay, so here we have Miss Chicken and this adorable little squirrel facing each other, seeming to exchange pleasantries. Um, this is what I'm just loving about this combination. Both of these decks are ridiculously adorable. Their colors are beautiful, and I feel like they correspond with each other very nicely. And the readings that I have been doing with them, it's bringing in that animal energy, but obviously with this being a animal head on human body situation, you could still very much read within the um, the mundane of one's normal day-to-day -day life. And then this kind of brings in more of that mystical animal spirit energy. But having the animals portrayed like this versus the more realistic ones here, although these are accessorized, which is not the way that you typically find them in nature, but um, having that balance, it just makes me even more feel that connection between we as humans and the animal kingdom. I mean, we, we are a part of this and it's a nice way of feeling connected to that. And really just the vibrancy and lightheartedness of this. Well, you know, it's not all super lighthearted, but I mean, look at that. How sweet next to this nightingale spirit. Love is all around. I mean, that's a nice message to accompany whatever changes you might be undergoing and just realizing that as you say goodbye to something and start anew, you've got support there. <laughs> and then as you're facing the addictions of the devil or whatever might have you bound up that uh, those chains of our own making, oftentimes, here's brown bear spirit to tell us to take some time out. So maybe sit with that, reflect on that, on what things may be in our control, what's outside of our control, taking that time out just to sort of sit and assess like where you might be getting yourself entangled in something that's not in your own best interest and how you might free yourself of that get out of your cage so yeah i've typically been using these um for just daily type spreads i might 
do a let go, lean in type spread just to check in for the day, the general energy of the day reflected through the Oracle card and then the tarot cards coming in with, well, what is something that I need to let go of? What do I need to release in following this message? And then what's something that I can lean into? What should I be embracing and trying to attract? So that's a go-to spread that I use very often. It's very simple. And I can elaborate as necessary based on whatever's going on with me that day. If I'm wanting clarification or if there's just a certain predicament I'm facing, then I'll, you know, I, I just kind of uh, play it by ear. I often make spreads up on the fly, not as something set in stone that I'll necessarily even do in the same way again. I just will sort of in that moment think of, well, what would the spread positions be that would most help me in that time? So, yes, on the other half of my table, I have a pair of oceanic decks. Again, I have flipped through Dame Darcy recently. This one, though, I am sharing for the first time. And what I love about both of these is the vintage feel that they have. The Dame Darcy is not on a white backing. It's more of an aged sort of cream beige tone as if it's tea stained or just aged with time. The drawings seem like something someone marooned on a desert island who still somehow had access to paper and, uh, you know, pens, markers, paint, what have you, as if they just sort of made their own tarot deck, that desert island scenario that the community loves asking, like, if you could only have one deck on you on a desert island, this is if your whole collection sank with your ship and you got a rough one up on your own. That's the feeling that I get from this, and I just love it so much. And then we have this wisdom from the depths or of the depths that uses collage art with these old timey depictions of people glared over images of all things ocean and nautical and it's it's just great again it is still very new to me but i have loved it so much look at this turtle as the world this kind of it just kind of go together it, youthful figure riding sea creatures. Um, oh, and look at these two sitting on seashells. So while the artwork is really different, uh, I feel like these two still go along with each other if I want to use them together. They're both tarot decks as opposed to the tarot oracle pairing that I was doing before. But what I found um, I've been doing, if I haven't just been using one or the other, I might lay down a row in the Dame Darcy and then underneath that wisdom of the depths. Just zoom out a little so those can show up better. And so with this pairing, I'll do what I often do when pairing tarot decks. I'll do sort of a surf and turf 
type reading, if you will, where the top row is representing more so my conscious experience, my mundane day-to-day life. And then what is below is sort of, it could be my subconscious mind, or it could be factors that are unseen and underlying the surface of what is going on up here. So this is more the things that I'm, my probably am aware of. Um, and I, 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 lay these out to get clarity on that though. Even if I'm aware of a situation, I still just find it helpful to unpack it. But then below that would be the things that I I haven't taken into consideration. I haven't had the awareness of whether it's something that I am myself repressing and denial of, or it's just something that I'm simply overlooking and it's needing my attention too. And it kind of helps me understand what sort of factors might be giving rise to what's happening above. It's been really fun to use them like that. And I've also, in the meantime, as I shared in my last video, I have my charms, little oceanic nautical themed charms. So what I'll do is, you know, maybe just kind of swim around in here, grab just a handful and drop, paying attention to what cards they fall on, where on the card they fall, if there's something that they seem to be pointing to, an image on that card, and what the meanings I've assigned to the charms themselves, how that can overlay the meaning of the card that they're in relation to. And they might fall in between cards. They might fall above them, which might feel like something that's a bit further out, not as immediate of a consideration that I have to think of right now. Whereas I tend to perceive things that fall closer to me as something that is a bit more pressing in the present. Um, And it goes more in the future going forward. But um, in any case, we have this, I would say the fish bones, generally the meaning I have assigned to that is akin to a uh, you know a ten of swords situation where I'm just sort of absolutely depleted, <laughs> like I've just been picked to the bone, kind of hitting a rock bottom. But then you can go up from there. So interesting that falls at the base of the wheel of fortune. So if I were looking at this as like, well, maybe that's how I'm feeling. Like the wheel has kind of been on the downward turn, and I'm feeling a bit down on my luck. But then here we have this king of wands. We have the ship that's showing more forward movement. Um, and then a palm tree, which I threw in sort of like a Lenormand meeting where the tree uh, I will generally regard as relating to health, but then also growth. And so I can see like if I'm feeling that sort of depletion, maybe I'm lacking this king of wands energy where I just need to like get fired up and a bit more assertive and focused on something and find that direction and make that room for myself to grow and actually take initiative on it. And I'm not doing a full reading here. I'm just kind of looking at that on the fly. I'm not even looking at it in relation to the other cards that are laying here as well. I'm just sort of, you know, without a specific question in mind, I I don't really know if what I'm saying is even making any sense, but just talking through like how I might interpret, you know, charms in relation to the cards. So yeah, aside from pairing those two decks together though, I do have individual oracle pairings that I will use with each of these. To start is my tattooed lady oracle, which lives with my tattoo tarot, ink and intuition. Um, For obvious reasons, these look pretty cool together with the tattoo theme, even though these are a creamier color than these. These just have the white background, but There are some beachy nautical symbols that can appear in this deck that coincide with the mermaid theme of the Dame Darcy. But also just the the drawings there, kind of the simplicity of them seem to go hand in hand. And I don't know, it seems like the Dame Darcy mermaids 
would have tattoos. And for sure, the sailors that they cavort with do. So for whatever reason, just that tattoo aesthetic seems to work. But see, you have like the anchor that goes with uh, the theme. Here is a mermaid. How do you like that? Ship. Hey. So yes, that's the Tattooed Lady Oracle with the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. And then with my Wisdom of the Depths deck, I have found a lovely, lovely pairing to be the Lunar Nomad Oracle. Now, this is a big honkin' deck. <laughs> this is very big <clears throat> for small hands. So I understand why some may not like it just based on that feature alone. I, on the other hand, have long monkey fingers, and so I'm good. <laughs> and it's not too many cards in the deck, about uh, 40 or so, so that makes it easy enough for shuffling. If it was a fatter deck, that might be tougher. And also, I am a corner shuffler, a uh, riffle shuffler. I don't, I, yeah, I struggle kind of gripping it like that, but um, I shuffle from the corners. So it's just how I was taught as a kid and I stick with it. And you would think that maybe that would warp my cards in strange ways, but I find it does not. It really doesn't make a difference. But anyway, the Lunar Nomad Oracle is actually a Lenormand deck, but the cards are blown up to be more Oracle sized versus a typical Lenormand deck that would be on a smaller scale. And I don't accordingly use this as a Lenormand deck. The size of it obviously does not lend itself to being laid out in a large spread, let alone a grand tableau. It's really not intended for that. So just using it as an oracle, um, as you can see the aesthetic here is that same vintage style, a lot of images and patterns collaged together. And once again, the color scheme is sort of a muted textured look to it. And I have just found this pairing to work extraordinarily well. I mean, aside from just looking beautiful together, the messages I've gotten from them, they just, they, they really communicate well with each other. And while this does not have a nautical theme, really, I definitely took it as a sign that this pairing was meant to be when the first card that I did draw from this two pair, well, there's an octopus or squid, what have you. Um, there are fish. Oh, the anchor. <laughs> So when I pulled this deck out, just to kind of test it, I'd already done a reading with the tarot cards and I was curious how it, it would work with it. And when that came out, I mean, not only was the message very, very relevant to uh, the question I had just asked and the tarot spread that I had just reflected on, but um, I just took the anchor as a sign like, yeah, these are meant to be. This also looks great with Danny Mystic's Mystic Masters Tarot. The guidebook for the Lunar Nomad Oracle I think is just wonderful and it really does help open the Lenormand cards up to more of an Oracle type deck. As you can see, quite lengthy descriptions here. And in being used as an oracle card, then the imagery on the cards is also opened up 
beyond the traditional Lenormand card, where you are really just looking at these symbols for what they are and not seeking any additional meaning in the artwork. But with these, there is so much going on in each of these images, and they do invite you in. The size of this card is an invitation. So it very much becomes intuitive in that visual respect, as well as the symbolic where just the traditional Lenormand goes. And I also neglected to mention before that this deck has more than just the traditional 36 Lenormand cards. The Seer, number 41. Aura, 37. Okay, so this is a deck that um, I actually haven't been using a lot lately. It's it's one I'm sort of unearthing to rediscover again and work with more. And I was just delighted when I saw because I was looking for something that I already had in my collection that might go with the Wisdom of the Deaths Tarot. I feel like I'm looking at this one again with fresh eyes. Um, it's old to me, but it's also new to me all at once. And this is grasping the original spirit of the depth year that I was supposed to undertake this year. I think that now that we are halfway through the year, I have to acknowledge um, this is not my depth year, <laughs> but I do feel like I had a bit more um, discernment than I did the prior two years for sure. I think I have slowed down my spending on new decks. I have also really ramped up the culling of what I have to try to keep my collection within a consistent size. Um, so trying to operate as best I can on a one in one out basis, it doesn't always work out that way, but it's, it's my goal. In the meantime, like I said, it's really nice to rediscover old decks like this and find new lease on life for them. I was originally just going to intro this video with the decks that are currently on my table as of the latter part of June and going into the early part of July. But I think that I will just cut it off here and come back next time with a few more deck pairings that I've been working with. I would say this here, these are the decks intended for just my day-to-day readings, just more of the mundane questions that I might have. And again, because I was looking for lightness and fun and silliness, I chose these decks to usher a bit of that in. But there is also, of course, the heavier side of life. And that's what I will be addressing next time with the other set of decks that I've worked with, just um, kind of grabbing at them as needed. So once again, we have the Tarot of Curious Creatures paired with the Spirit Animal Oracle, and then the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot with the Wisdom of the Depths Tarot, which sometimes pair together, but I will also have the Lunar Nomad Oracle and the Tattooed Lady Oracle guest starring when summoned. So I hope that you are all doing well. I would love to hear what decks that you have pulled out for this summer and the ones that you find yourself reaching for when you are in a good mood, want to stay in that good mood, or maybe you're feeling a bit down and you just need a little bit of cheering up. What's your go-to? And in the meantime, again, I have to thank you so, so much if you're here with me today and watching this video for whatever my two pence are worth. Bye!